Hey, great Saturday to you all. I hope that you were all able to wake up and tell yourself you were grateful to be alive. And I hope that you were able to embrace the full power of your being and remain calm all day. You know, the biggest switch, big head, I hear you. Sorry, it's like my dog waits until I'm on a live and then she sits there and starts scratching. So, guys, what I need you guys to understand is this. When you guys are doing inner work, or you're trying to figure out who you are, I want you to understand that the creation of your being started within the womb of your mother. And not from when you took breath. Okay? Okay? So, in actuality, while your creation of your being was happening, you were hearing and feeling and sensing everything that your mother was. So, the totality of her outer world and her inner world as well. So, that's where the initial creation of your being stems from. Okay? And that has a lot to do with the creation of patterns. And why do we feel this stuff? Well, it's so that it will prepare us for what we're going to have to live when we're born. So you see, as we are forming in our mother's womb, this is why we can hear everything going on, we can sense everything going on, and we feel everything going on within our mother and her outside world because it is to prepare us and our nervous systems to be able to endure what is going to be the life that we are going to live. It's in direct correlation, and that's why it happens. This is why, you know, there are souls that once they're born, they realize the magnitude of what they signed up for, and they said, oh, I'm not doing this. And they check out. Literally, because it's always the soul's choice. Whether that you're going, you're going to embrace and embody the life that you chose or not. Literally. And all that comes with it. But what people don't understand is when you are being constructed in the womb of anybody in survival. So what is survival mode? It's when you are living out of fear. Now, for generations and generations and generations before us, belief systems, ways of thinking, speaking, and doing have become systematic patterns of operation. Okay? So instead of looking at our mothers or our grandmothers for the experience of what it is, what it is understand that the patterns have been leaking through the generations until corrected. So, survival mode is real. And this is why I try to make everybody aware of it, because while you are living in survival mode, you are not living from a joyful state. It is impossible. Okay? When you're being constructed as your individual self within the womb, your nervous system, your body, your everything is being prepared to withstand what you're going to have to live. It's like a prep stage also, not just a growth stage. It's a prep stage. Literally. Literally. Anyway, my point to it all is, look, whether you can identify it in the generations before you or not, it doesn't mean that it is not there. Survival mode is when you're constantly in a state of fight, flight, or freeze. And you may not be conscious of it, 
because most people are not conscious of the survival mode they're in until they are deathly ill. Or they end up at the end of their life looking back on a lifetime of regrets instead of a lifetime of joy. This is what this survival mode produces, okay? If you get to the end of your life and you're all crippled and sick and... What do you think that happens? Instead of just dying of old age. Well, it is... What you've had to live all your life in survival mode. That's not thriving. Very different. And this survival mode comes on with fear. The minute there is any type of fear. And this is why I come out and I say, I have zero fear. Nothing scares me. As long as there is fear, there is survival. Okay? Because your body already knows what it has to do for you if you're scared of anything. But what are the biggest fears that have been leaked down through the years? Well, fear of judgment, fear of not living up to expectations. Fear of not being who we're supposed to be. Fear of making wrong choices. Fear of not having enough. Fear of accept non-acceptance. Fear of not being loved. Fear of not being approved of. And this is why it is so important that we remove fear from the generations even now and all of those to come. When you understand how powerful you are as a being and you understand the force that's fueling you for life, well then literally you have nothing to be fearful about. It doesn't matter what you've had to live, how you've been constructed to be, what life you have chosen to live doesn't matter. The biggest thing that you need to do is you need to approve of yourself. Accept yourself and your experience. Validate yourself. Love yourself. Respect yourself. Understand the energy that you embody is uniquely yours. So I'll say it again. There's no knockoffs. Can't make a copy of you. They could clone you, but it still wouldn't be you. You're uniquely you and are needed on this planet for the greatest show on earth, believe it or not. And it's happening. And this stuff you're not going to hear in the news. Trust that. Because the shifts are real. And they have to happen. Why? Because of all of the thousands of years of operational systems and beliefs handed through the years and generations that are all fear-based. People have been living in survival mode for thousands of years. That's not how, the way it's supposed to be. So when you're always living in a state of fear, well, you're producing the effects of that within your body. We're not supposed to fear anything. But even as kids, come on, we are conditioned through fear. The fear that our parents had that we would hurt ourselves, That something would happen to us. So they were governing their conditioning and they're taking care of us out of fear. And out of survival. Because they themselves were surviving life. Not thriving. 
Like, I, I know that factually when I look at my father. My dad's dead now, physically. <laughs> but far from gone, I'll tell you that. But he survived life. All of his life. Why? Because he had his own traumas and inflictions that he couldn't understand or validate for himself or get over either. But he's grateful that I have now because it frees him from having to come back and repeat his cycle. Literally. And this is why it's so important to remove the survival. Because no living organism is meant to live out of survival. That's why we have an instinctual brain. That if something should arise and it is life-threatening to us, well, that brain knows what to do. And I talk about that in one of my books. When I say, hey, my brain works for me, not the other way around. I am not my brain. I am not my mind. It works for me. No living organism can be in survival producing those effects of survival within themselves and believe that they're not creating the effects of that even in their daily life. Literally. Survival within, the, within your own self leaks into you creating survival in every relationship, every situation, circumstance, and scenario. When, if you're not aware of it, well, that's what keeps you in the survival mode. Literally. So you got to become aware of your own survival mode and why you are in this state to begin with. And it's not something that you've done wrong. It is the way that we have been constructed to be. So it's a totally different situation. See? Life happens to everybody. But you know that you can change survival to thriving, literally. When you choose for yourself that you want to calm your nervous system and you don't want to be in survival because you realize there's nothing to survive. Surviving produces illness, unbalance, Disharmony. You can't be centered while you're in survival because you are hypervigilantly trying to survive life. It doesn't work. Because if you're hypervigilant about being in survival and you're always scared of something, well, it's producing anxiety, it's producing depression, it's producing a lack of Self-worth, because you're not going to feel worthy as an individual. You're not going to feel empowered as an individual. You know, when I talk about all of the power within and everything, this is a real force. And it knows no survival. It only knows thriving. So there's a contradiction with the human being and what is actually fueling it for life. So this is why I tell people constantly and repetitively that up until 10 minutes ago no longer exists. The only time that it exists is in your own being. Every time you bring it up in your mind, well, your body does not know whether it is a memory or whether you are actually living it right now. 
So, if you talk about anything from your past, if you talk about anything that is upsetting you, if you talk about anything that is making you angry, if you talk about anything that is inducing negative vibrations in your being, your body does not know if you're just talking about it or if you're actually living it. Because your brain only processes now. Because that's where you're supposed to be living from. Not your past. Not your experience. You're supposed to be living in your now. And you know, I want you guys, even if it's on replay, to take a minute and follow me on this one. Right now, I want you to take the focus off everything, everything around you, and put the focus inside of you right now. When you really take a look at what you're feeling right now, I bet you more than none, you don't feel anything at all. Take a minute to check that. Now, that's your truest power, believe it or not. So, ideas, thoughts, speech, actions, interactions, create states within you. Those are the causes of what you are going to feel. Because I know I sit here right now, literally, and I can express it, that my central nervous system and all of my body is at complete ease. I have an embedded peace within me that cannot be shifted. No matter what idea, thought, word, action comes from my being. This is the state I want you guys to be in and stay in. Because there's no survival. That's the truest power of your being. Literally. And from that point, well, that is the true power of possibility. And that is where you find your power. Is in that nothingness? Yeah. Literally. And there's things that happen to us. We all have to live. But you don't just feel things for no reason. And when you decide to live from within this state of calm, it has nothing to do with anything from your past or anything from your future. It is right now, in this moment. Always. So, when you guys are feeling survival mode coming on, I want you guys to tap back into you and say, hold on, whoa. I have the power to hold my stillness no matter what is happening and feel nothing at all. Why do I say that? Because that is the true governance of staying in your heart space. It's not telling you a bunch of lies. It's not talking you out of things. It's not telling you that you should be fearful of all kinds of things. Yeah, it's not going to tell you those things. Your heart keeps you in thriving mode and not survival mode. Survival mode is real. And I didn't realize how real it was until I took myself out of survival mode. 
Yeah. You can't operate right when you're in survival mode. You don't think right. You don't speak right. Because you're coming from a place of nervousness and hypervigilance. And you're in fight, flight, or freeze. All the time. You can't be fighting yourself or your life. You got to be creating it. And you can't be running from yourself or your life. You have to be creating it by choice. And you can't freeze. Staying stuck in a misconception of who you really think you are. You're a very powerful being. And the universe has taken inspired actions to make sure that you're a part of the greatest show on earth. Literally. But you're not supposed to be surviving. None of us are. But we really are surviving life until we realize it and change it. From beliefs that have been leaked down through patterns and generations. Through our life experience that has made us feel a ton of different emotions. You don't just hit my age and feel not worthy or valid be, because that just happens. No, that's years of not being heard, not being seen, not being validated for who you are as a person. Well, that creates self-doubt, non-acceptance of your own self. You don't trust your own judgment. I know what that feels like. I've been there. I mastered survival in order to take, uh, take myself out of it. I had to master survival to the point where I learned every single thing about it. <laughs> okay? This is why I say I was forged in the fire. But I'm also living proof that you can stop all that by simple choice. Because it's not anything that we're living that's making us feel anything. It's, you know... It's just like how you can, you know, but our brains are always taking in things and processing things, whether you're aware or not. It depends where your focus is and where your energy is. And if you're really distracted from your own self. Because if you're distracted from your own self, what does that look like? Okay, let me give you a really great example. You wake up, you don't feel like you have energy, you're bombarded with everything that you have to do in the day, and you just feel like throwing a bomb to it all. Nah, rewrite those kind of days. By getting up and going, whoa, 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 what have I constructed myself to think, feel, do, and say today? Let me correct that. Delete. I want to encourage you guys. Every day when you wake up. You're a brand new person. Literally. You have a blank slate in front of you. You can create your ideas. And your thoughts. And your speech. And create a state for yourself. That does not induce survival. Yeah. You know, I was in survival mode for so long during life that when I removed myself out of survival mode by choice alone, you know that it felt very uncomfortable for me because it's not something that my body was familiar with. And that's the biggest difference with me now is that I've mastered thriving. I don't want to be in survival mode ever. And this is why I disconnect from people, places, and things. Because nobody else's survival is going to induce survival in me. And that's the biggest thing. I have no hatred for anybody, no malice, no nothing. But 
I refuse to even engage in conversations that are meaningless. Literally, I don't and I won't. There's no survival in my being anymore. And that's why I finally really understand the difference. Because I was in survival mode for so long, not understanding why I just couldn't feel right. Literally. I hated myself, I hated my life, and I hated everybody attached to me, and I just, I just hated it. And I couldn't understand why I had to suffer and be everybody's scapegoat and everybody's, oh, well, uh, you're fucked up, you're fucked up, but they zero self-accountability to what they were doing to me. I couldn't understand it. I took on everybody else's problems as my own, and I felt that being, I had to be, I put so much effort into being a good person, no matter what I had lived, that I wasn't being a good person to me. Literally. See, that's the biggest change. Coming out of survival mode. There's nothing to survive. When you understand that you're actually creating your life to be any way that it is, well, then you understand that you're, you're, you alone are creating the effects of that too. With the right self-accountability, and I love how Bruno says it, radical responsibility, because that's facts too. Well, I became radically responsible for my own self-accountability. When I realized that I was doing it to myself, and that there was no person, place, or thing doing it to me, oh, that was the biggest shift I've ever felt in my life. That's why I'm at the point in my life where I don't accept it from anybody. Because I don't accept it for myself. Calming your central nervous system is going to feel very weird to your body when you've been living in survival mode your whole life. Yeah, and it doesn't feel normal. Why? Because your comfort is the chaos. How do I know? Because... My own comfort became chaos and conflict because that's all I knew. But I also felt the effects of that and survival mode to the point that it pushed me to intensive care. Total organ failure, 16 hours to live. Come on, the priest was at the toes of my bed saying my last sacraments or whatever it is they were saying. Me, yeah, I blocked him out. Guys, survival's real. But you don't have to live like that. You really don't. We're not supposed to be living from experience or hand-me-down belief systems or patterns that it, you know, when you know better, you do better. It's just as simple as that. Like I said the other day, I have had a lot of life experience that somebody else would not have survived. I already know that. But is it from the will and the power of my innate, unique energy signature that has forced me through it all? Literally. Okay? Your will to live has to be greater than anything in order to remove yourself out of survival. But your will is greater than anything. The power within you, that's why you gotta take yourself out of survival mode. Yeah. And like I told you guys before, I was in survival mode from my first breath of life. I was in survival mode in the womb of my own mother. While she was living hell. I was being hardwired for hell before I even took my first breaths. But living survival all my life forced me to the edge of death many, 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 many times. Well, I had to live it 
to learn it, to master coming out of it before I could help anybody else come out of theirs. Things don't just happen to us for no reason. It's all a part of your unique learning. So don't stay in survival mode by shaming yourself about what you've had to live because it no longer exists. Let it go. The only one that's beaten yourself up about it is you. The only person that is feeling the pain of the thoughts that you're having about it all is you. Let it go. That is not who you are. That was a mere experience. Everything that you've done, thought, said within your experience is gone. Learn from it. That's all it has to be. Don't keep replaying these things over in your mind to make your body literally be forced into survival of it all again. You know, the easiest way to rewrite or stop or correct your thinking patterns is to take a look at them. Don't be distracted from it. Take a look with no shame, no blame, no judgment. And when you see yourself thinking things that you know you shouldn't be, stop for a minute and literally sit calmly. Don't get disturbed by what you're thinking because this is being self-analytical. You stop, question that thought to your soul. Ask your soul, because it knows. Why am I thinking like this? What is coming up in me that I need to face and correct? Because this is why these things happen to us. Memories of things come up. Past experience come up. Because you're meant to take a look at it and correct it within your being. That's what the soul does. But the soul will also block you. Your subconscious brain will block you from experiencing these things of the past. Until it feels you're ready. Why? Because it does not want to send you out of whack within your own self. This is another reason why I have a bring it on attitude. It's not to be aggressive in this world. It is to, for myself and my soul to now deal with things immediately. I don't allow anything to be stored within my being from emotional imprints. I've done a lot of learning to get out of survival of life. Well, guys, this is the advantage for you all. Is I freely flood the world with love and knowledge because I know what survival is. I lived in survival up until five years ago. I'm no longer in survival mode. Yes, I'm very passionate about the things that I come out and speak. Yes, I'm very truthful about it because... <sighs> Denials for the weak, and I'm not. I'm not weak. I know I'm powerful, and I'm and I'm not in denial about anything. So I speak truthfully about everything. And you know what? You don't have to remember the truth. It's the truth. You only have to remember when you're trying to manipulate and lie and cover things up and f make your own stories. Hey, I have no story to tell but the truth. The raw, real truth. And if I can live in survival all my life and then again create it for myself, not even realizing it, and then correct that and remove myself out of survival, hey, everybody can do it too. I'm no different than you. The only thing that makes us different is our free will and our choices. You know? 
Guys, do it for yourself. Calm your central nervous system. When you're living in survival mode, you're in survival. Living as if every day is a threat to you. No, don't operate like that. Own your power and create your state of being. Create your thoughts by rewriting anything that is stored in you that may be coming up. You know, it happens to us, eh? Flashbulb memories. Understand and realize that memories are only stamped in us according to the emotions that they made us feel. Don't keep reliving things that you don't have to. Correct them right away. Have no regrets. Just calm your central nervous system. Because if you don't, and if you don't make some serious choices for your own being, you will feel the effects of it by the creation of your own choices. And this is real too. Guys, and usually what happens is people wait until they are on the edge of death to make changes. I know. I've been on the edge of death seven times. One of them, I, you know, intensive care visit, I know I died. Because nothing looked the same coming out of there. But anyway, don't wait until you're in that state to make simple conscious choices for yourself. Yeah, and it is very possible. And yes, it's going to feel weird to yourself and your body and your life when you stop feeding your body the hormones and chemicals of survival. Yeah, your body goes, hey, what's going on here? You've been feeding me this mode and pattern for so long that this now feels very uncomfortable to me. Okay, let me try to get that feeling back. So let me push you to do things to trigger that survival again because I, I'm feeding for the, that chemical. That's when you say, uh, 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 no. Body, you work for me, not the other way around. You don't govern my anything. Because that's what I had to do. Yeah, I've done a lot of research on this stuff, guys. That's all a part of mastering myself. And to the depths of what I had been in survival, well, I had to do the depths of the research to get myself out of it. Okay, because I didn't have, and I've never had the money for resources, the money for, okay? Anytime I saw a shrink, they refused to see me again. When I was a teenager and my mother brought me to a shrink, well, they, you know what happened? The shrink told my mother, uh, she needs a team of about 10. I can't personally help her. Come on. So I did it for myself after the world had nothing to offer me. And this is why I tell you guys, it doesn't matter what you've lived. You don't need a fat bank account to do what I've done because I've never had one. Never been handed $5 to get ahead by anybody in life. No, it, okay, so if I can live what, everything that I've lived and no longer accept survival for myself out of mere choice and free will, you all can do the same. I don't sit back and make excuses for anything. I'm real with it, head on. Guys, I encourage you all to do the same. But love yourself no matter what. And when you're loving yourself to that magnitude, it doesn't matter what's happening outside of you because you are projecting so much self-love to everything that you do that you thrive naturally. Literally. Literally. So it doesn't matter who's accepting you or loving you or respecting you or doing whatever they're doing. Because that's to the magnitude of what you are accepting for yourself also. Okay? But how do you see things? Take a look at it all. Ask yourself. Sit with yourself. You know how many people I hear tell me, Toby, I can't sit in silence? Why not? 
Well, guess what? I remember what that felt like once upon a time also. Where I always had to have 20 different people around me. My door was like a swinging saloon. Anybody who called me and needed me, I ran. Literally. I'm not surviving life. And I encourage you guys all to step into your full power and not survive life either. You know, and we all carry things that we feel shameful to talk about. Or we feel like we'll be judged if we talk about. If you're not carrying any shame, blame, guilt, or denial, or judgment about your experience, well, guess what? You won't feel it coming at you either, because the only time you feel that coming at you is when you yourself are projecting that too. Guys, love yourself. Accept yourself. Don't judge yourself. But figure yourself out. And remove the survival from your life. I encourage you all to do that today. Don't let that stuff be a part of your life by choice. Your thoughts, your choices, your actions, your speech are creating your life. Be self-accountable for the things that you are creating in your life. And you'll see how your life changes, literally in a blink of an eye. Don't choose to be negative within your own self. What does that look like? Telling yourself that you're any less of a person than you are. And I can't even say the examples that I wanted to say. No. You know that there's nobody that you speak to more in this world than your own self every day? So today, look at the things that you're telling yourself. And if they're not empowering, change that by choice you all have the power to do that anyway guys i love you all calm your central nervous systems because you probably do not even realize how in survival mode you really are until you take a look at it Don't distract yourself. Take a good look at yourself. I do every day. And I choose my state of being, which is grateful. How could I not be? After everything that I have lived in this experience, just to wake up in the morning for me is a huge success in my life. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud every day and grateful that I have had the life that I've had so that today and every other day in the future I can be in my full power for myself and for everybody on the planet because just my frequency alone counterbalances hundreds of thousands that are embodying a lower frequency so it doesn't matter what I'm doing in this world. As long as I'm alive and breathing, well, I'm doing what I need to do. Literally. For not only myself, but the planet. Guys, I love y'all. Have a great day. Set that high vibe. And you matter. So put yourself and your wellness first all the time. Because you're no good to anybody else if you are not good to your own self and half the time people are running to do for others because they feel shitty about themselves so guess what don't be that person that feels less than you should pat yourself on the back give yourself a high five tell yourself you're amazing tell yourself you're powerful Tell yourself you're thriving, you're healing. You are creating your life by your design alone. According to your heart's desires. Stay there. Your mind is supposed to work for you, not the other way around. 
And you are not your mind. Remember that. Guys, I love you all. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Set that high vibe and be safe out there. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of cold out there across Canada. And, yeah, we're getting a cold snap. But just look at it this way. It'll be over soon enough. It's got to start for it to end. Okay? So be grateful. Say, all right, okay, cool. It's here. Let's do it. Let's get it over with. And we'll be through it in a minute. Guys, I love you all. Have a great day. Peace.